welcome back to the channel hope everybody is doing well following on from my last video on the Knipex and laser VDE torque wrenches I thought it would be good to go through my actual setup for working on battery systems um, the kind of battery systems that I work on range from 48 volts up to 220 volts they are made up of individual cells that go from 2 volts sometimes up to 6 volts and they provide backup supplies to protection systems, DC lube or pumps, uh, uh, fire systems, uh, and those kind of systems that are critical to the operation of large plants. Um, so the bag itself is from Velocity. It is the Velocity Rogue 2. I deliberately chose the high-vis orange version so it kind of matched with the VDE tools and I'd know when I was picking it up that those are all my VDE tools inside. On this side here, I have my insulated glove pouch. Um, I've made a little loop up to clip this onto so that I can take them with me. Um, it's okay. It's, uh, I don't mind it. I'm sure there's a better way I could do it. It does drag around a bit and annoy me, but it's okay for the time being. Uh, the gloves themselves, they are class zero. Um, I guess I could actually drop down to class zero zero if need be. Uh, they're 500 volts class zero zero. These are 1000 volts uh, being class zero. And I have my leather over protectors on them uh, as well. So that's those there. Um, also on this side, if we scoot them around a bit, I have a uh, Knipex panel wrench uh, for the panel keys to get to that. And I also have an ATEX rated torch. Uh, this one is from Proof Technic. Um, I'm not sure it's actually available anymore. And you just screw it up to uh, Bring it on uh, and then screw off again. Um, if you can't get hold of that one, you can still get this one from Wolf. Uh, these are currently available uh, and they're also ATEX rated as well. It's ATEX rated because of the hydrogen and the battery systems that can be given off. It's quite low values, but when you're going around the torch and getting into little corners and pockets, uh, it's probably best to have a, an ATEX one because they're readily available. Um, I also carry a little pencil with me as well, a tractable pencil. Uh, just in case I do need to make any notes or scroll on anything. Uh, around this side, I have a, the meter pouch from Tough Built. And that unclips off the handle. So one thing I don't like about this bag, the strap catches underneath and uh, can topple it over. So the Tough Built is housing this clip-on ammeter from UniT. It's the UT216C. Um, it's pretty much adequate for my needs. Uh, I'll do current measurements for charging currents they're okay. I can also do uh, voltage measurements on this as well for the overall voltage. And it's, uh, it's reasonable for my use. Uh, together with that we've got the leads in the front here for Unity. They are the standard leads that come with it. And then I have the thermocouple that comes with it as well so I can measure battery temperature or charger temperature should I need to. Um, that's that there. Uh, behind this little pouch um, should have said to clip this on and off, you get these belt clips from Tough Built as well. I just tie wrapped it onto the handle loop for the time being. Um, this top tie wrap does move about a little bit. Um, again, not ideal, but it'll do me for the time being. Um, inside this pouch here, I do have a little thermal imaging camera, which is the FLIR one. I did try putting the UT216C in there as well, and the leads behind there, and a little elasticated clip. But this zip only does up on one side, and you'd find it'd push the meter out and it'd fall out. So I purchased that tough built to put the uh, clamp in, and then put this uh, FLIR one imaging camera in, into this pouch here. This uh, plugs into an iOS phone or an iPad, and you can take thermal images with that which is good for the electronic chargers and the actual batteries themselves, links to make sure they're all okay. Um, in this front packet here, which you can only just see, hold them up there, this is all my spare batteries that I keep in here, um, set of triple A's for the torches uh, and double A's for the impedance test that's inside the main section. Right, so we'll do that. And down there. 
So, moving on to the tools inside the bag. For sure, just tweak camera so you can see a little bit more. Okay, so in this um, front patch here, I don't keep anything currently. Um, I might well do because I want to get some leads. So I might well look to keep the extra leads for this meter in the front of that pouch. Um, but we have the actual meter itself, the Hioki battery impedance meter. Very, very nice meter. I've done loads of other videos on this, um, so you can go and check those out on the channel should you want to. And this does take the uh, AA batteries that I've seen carry spares in the back of the uh, compartment here, so I carry spare batteries for this should I need to. Uh, but yeah, very, very nice instrument. <coughs> Pretty expensive. This particular one is the 3554 01. It is obsolete now. Um, I hope you have another unit out. Uh, which I'll link to in the description box below so you can go and check it out should you want to. Uh, by the side of that I have my torque wrench, this is one Kinepex, this is the 5 to 25 newton meter one. It covers the vast majority of the battery cells I work on. If I do need to go higher then I have the 5 to 50 newton meter torque wrench. I'll know which ones I'm working on before I go out there so I know which wrench to take with me. Uh, the unfortunate thing is this doesn't quite fit. It will just about fit, you can do it up. Um, up to sort of up to there. Can kind of do it up to there uh, and it does hold in place, but it is pushing its uh, luck a little bit. But then again, the whole bag is a little bit uh, stretched with what I've got in it at this moment in time. Uh, for the torque wrenches, obviously they need sockets. They sit in this uh, front pouch here. Uh, these are almost consumables, if you like, so that I just change them out as I'm using them and they become damaged and I need to uh, get some new ones. I could get them from anywhere really. Uh, prices for sockets are uh, 25 to £30 pounds per socket for these kind of ones. Uh, this one particular one is a Boddington's 22 and then we have a... I don't have a uh, okay, so 17. Uh, is from Knipex. Uh, I've got a 13 from Stavili. Um I've got another 13 from Fakum. Uh, so I carry two 13s and then an 8 and a 10 which are also from Fakum at this moment in time. To go along with them I have a little 3x ratchet predominantly for undoing stuff really and doing things up initially and then I'll move to the torque wrench. Uh, this is from Facom as well. Uh, everything's 3 8 drive for me. And then finally I have a, uh, a little uh, extension bar should I require it. This particular one is from Knipex, which is the 9835125. Uh, again, all of this stuff is available from multiple different manufacturers. When they want to damage it, I'll just buy what suits me. I've got no allegiance to a particular manufacturer. Um, what we'll also do spanners uh, mix things up so down at the bottom there I've got a 10 millimeter VDE from Vihar um, I've got a 22 mil from Vihar as well and somewhere there he is I've got a 13 mil this particular one's from ITL uh, again they get damaged relatively easy so you just uh, replace them with whatever's available speaking of which that's already damaged okay not need to replace that one um, as well as, so sticking to the tools, I guess we'll move to the screwdrivers. Uh, CK 8mm slotted, and we've got a 6.5mm a slotted from Milwaukee as well. They're mostly for prising the caps off the battery connections to get to them, really. Uh, we don't usually do screws up and down with them. I do have a Phillips as well, uh, predominantly locks on panels when they've become loose. That's what the user tend to use that one for. Um, the Milwaukee ones actually come from a three-piece set. Uh, the other, I think, is a slotted posi unit that comes with a Milwaukee, and I don't need that in this kit, so that's languishing somewhere else. And then two slotted screwdrivers from PB Swiss Tools. These are the small uh, 3mm one and a 3.5mm one. Uh, these are used for adjusting charger controls. Um, so that's those there. And then we use for UT216C um, these crocodile clips from 
RS components. These are the RS Pro ones. They actually match the uh, probes on the Uni-T lead, so I use them with that uh, should I need to. And then finally, we're into leads for the actual Hioki battery tester. I've got the right angled ones. These are all for terminal testing uh, to measure the impedance on batteries. Um, so they are a dual probe. I might have to do a picture of this close up, I would imagine. I doubt you'll. I'll see how it comes out and I'll um, go for a, an actual picture perhaps. Uh, but these are spring loaded uh, concentric probes in there to get the four terminal measurement that's required. Um, so they're the right hand wound ones. And then I have a set of straight ones as well. Yeah, and they're just straight. Uh, so that's the whole of the kit there. Um, um, so there is nothing else in the bag whatsoever. I did try putting a clip on here to house this on as well. In fact, I actually had uh, clothes pegs initially, um, but they're quite weak and snap and break easy. So I tried making up a little bracket, which is a bit loose. It does sit there a little bit, but it will slide off and fall off. So I'm still experimenting with that and trying to sort something out. Um, but other than that, I don't keep anything else in any of the other pockets. So there's bits and pieces that are free, but it is a little bit of a squeeze to get everything in there. I guess one of my alternatives is to put the meter, Hioki impedance meter, back in its case. Um, I could do that and then uh, that would free up some space inside there. Uh, I could also get one set of leads inside the Hioki case. It's a bit of a struggle to get both sets of leads and you can just about manage it, but it does squeeze up a little bit. Um, so I'm not too happy doing that. And I do want to buy uh, the third set of leads that these come with, um, which is a set of crocodile clips with a temperature sensor as well. It does plug into the Hioki. Um, and I just won't have room for all of that in this. So. And my preference is actually to have everything all in one bag, so I know I'm not forgetting anything. But that's something that's still kind of work in progress. So that's the whole kit there. I will leave some information in the description box below, part numbers uh, and links for the different items where I've found them. But obviously a lot of them will be UK based uh, links. And some of them will be alternatives where I've struggled to find what I actually have. Um, I totted this all up. It comes to £4,764.42, um, so quite a sizable sum for a maintenance kit. But if you bear in mind the kind of battery systems that I work on, a site may well have well over £100,000 worth of battery cells. So to have a 5K setup to carry out condition monitoring on them and get the most out of the life of them it is well worthwhile, really. So the most expensive piece of kit, unsurprisingly, is this Hioki battery tester. As I said, it is obsolete. So the replacement unit for that is around about £2,500 uh, and for that you would get one set of leads plus you'd have to buy the right angled or the straight set of leads as an extra. Uh, but you'll get that for around about £2,500. The actual extra set of leads with the crocodile clips on them, uh, they do them in a small size and a large size. Uh, the small size is £185 because that's got the temperature probe on it and the large size are 175 um, because that doesn't have the temperature probe but obviously a larger clip and you can buy the temperature sensor to plug into the unit as an extra which is 102 pounds um, so you can easily get up to the 5k mark uh, with this setup um, next bit of kit will be the Fleur thermal engineering camera now this is the pro version you can buy a slightly cheaper version than this so this is about £450. You can knock a couple of hundred pounds off that uh, if you want to by going for a different unit. Uh, and then we're on to the torque wrenches. Um, yeah, VDE stuff is never cheap. Uh, these two torque wrenches here are £360 and £416 for a longer one. Uh, and then even a little 3 8 ratchet, that's uh, £170. Uh, so not cheap, but then again, they're not the cheapest of makes. There are other makes out there, but I guess you could get cheaper, um, which was one of the ideas behind the laser unit. But if you've seen the previous video, you will have seen that the laser unit struggles with accuracy, but these two units are pretty much fine with. And then sockets and spanners, you're paying sort of 25 to 30 pounds individually. So yeah, not a cheap setup, but as I said, pretty much justified for the sites that I do work on. Uh, 
So that's it for this video. Hope you found it interesting. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.